So over the last few years, YouTube has become a very important channel for me to market myself online, to be able to deliver value to my audience, and to get new consulting leads for my business as well. And I often get asked about the tools, the equipment and process I use to plan and create my videos. So today I'm gonna to detail kind of how I go through that entire process from planning uh, and everything that's involved um, from start to finish. So to start with planning, I plan my video schedule and the content in Asana, which is the uh, task and project management tool that I use. Um, if you've spent any time on your on my channel, you'll probably see Asana is actually what I make a lot of my YouTube videos about. Uh, but planning in Asana allows me to stick to a really consistent posting schedule, which is really important because uh, YouTube's algorithm really rewards consistency. So if you want to grow subscribers and viewers posting consistently really helps. I also think it's just good to post consistently as well so that your subscribers know to check for new videos. Uh, when recording, I often batch my videos and, and actually record a bunch of videos at once. So I'll come up with some ideas for maybe like a month's worth of videos and I'll spend an afternoon just recording, maybe like usually a, a month will be one a week, uh, one video a week, so I'll do four videos uh, in one afternoon. And I try to pick topics that people need help with. So with Asana and Pipedrive, I'll think about the common questions that I get from clients that I work with, or maybe features that I can explain or new features that have come out. And I aim for the videos to be about five to 10 minutes in, in length, as I know that the attention span uh, of a lot of users on YouTube isn't super long. Um, and actually recently, I actually created an online course to help people with Asana and I'm doing the same with Pipedrive at the moment. So these videos go into a lot more depth and detail and follow more of a step-by-step -step process. But with YouTube and the recordings I create for YouTube, my goal is to deliver sort of short, sharp, actionable advice and really help people get some quick wins nice and quickly. So in Asana, I have a basically, yeah, a task for each video that I'm planning to make and I'll add ideas and notes to the description. And I have a template of subtasks that kind of lists a bit of a checklist of things that I need to do for each video so that I don't miss a step. So when it comes to recording the actual video, I, I use ScreenFlow on the Mac to actually record the, the video. And I like ScreenFlow because it lets me record the webcam that I'm talking to and my screen at the same time so I can have a little picture in picture in the final video. And ScreenFlow also has some really nice editing tools. So uh, I can zoom in on the mouse or different sections of the screen, which is great for the type of tutorial videos that I create. Um, it, just, it just works perfectly for screencasts. When I was just getting started, I just used QuickTime on the Mac, which is free. And I've also tried Capto in the past as well. That's a tool that comes as part of Setapp. So if you have a Setapp subscription, uh, Capto actually comes with that. Now the audio, I record using a newer NW700 podcast mic, um, which I got off Amazon years and years ago. It's actually nothing flash. It's really nothing special. Like I can't remember the price. It was pretty, pretty affordable, sort of in the $50 sort of range. And that's plugged into a Behringer Zenixi, I think is how you pronounce it, a Zenixi, Zenixi 302 USB mixer, which is uh, what which I need to provide phantom power to the mic. The mixer also gives you a little more control over the audio levels and supports multiple tracks if you want to record and change the levels of audio from the computer, maybe. Um, and it is also required if you have a mic like mine that requires that phantom power, you, you need to have some kind of mixer before the audio can then go into your computer. I use a Logitech HD webcam to record the video of myself. It supports 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is absolutely fine for the type of videos that I'm working on. Uh, Logitech actually does have a really nice 4K webcam, which I'm really tempted by, so I don't have it yet, but maybe that's something I will uh, upgrade to in the future. I've positioned my desk in front of a window, which means I get a lot of natural light to illuminate my face. And I also purchased a small LED ring light from Amazon, I think it was about $25, that gives me some additional light and I can actually toggle the LED lighting between like warm and cooler tones. So if the light coming through the window isn't quite good enough, I can kind of warm, warm up the lighting a little bit if I, if I need to, which is great. And when I record, I generally just do one take. I don't bother starting and stopping with smaller smaller uh, file or you know creating lots of little files I do one take and I don't really have a script I have some bullet points there in Asana which kind of just guide my train of thought and make sure I cover all the key topics and just stay on track 
um, I basically like to pretend that I'm talking to a client. So if the occasional um or ah uh slips in there, that's fine. Um, I like the videos to come across nice and natural without feeling too scripted. And I will pause or I'll redo parts if I stuff up. Um, and I can always cut those bits out in post-production. But generally just one take um, is, is all I need. And then finally, getting into post-production, obviously once I've edited in ScreenFlow, I upload the video to YouTube, and I have subtasks in Asana that are assigned to my virtual assistant, Angeline, who will take care of the video description, the tags, cards linking to different videos and uh, links on my website, and she'll create a thumbnail for me in Canva. Uh, she'll also create a WordPress post for my website and embeds the video in there and leaves everything in a draft state so that I can check it before I then decide when I'm ready to publish. Now I used to do all of this myself but I can say since hiring a virtual assistant it's been great to be able to offload this to Angeline and she can I can just save a lot of time in that post-production phase which is great. And finally, yeah, I have chosen to monetize my videos with ads on YouTube, which is quite nice. Uh, the, the little income that I get just helps to offset some of my costs. And it means that um, if that income, you know, it's slowly growing, I can justify spending more time on videos in the future. And so that's it. That's my recording process. There's not a lot to it. Um, it does get easier the more you do it. And I know that when getting started, it can be really intimidating um, to get in front of the camera and put yourself out there. My advice is just to start and don't worry about making the videos perfect. Um, if you look back at some of the early videos on my channel, I actually will cringe when I look at them. Um, I don't have any lighting. I don't even have a webcam. I'm just looking at the built-in camera on my laptop. So I'm kind of looking down and it looks terrible. Um, but the important thing is the content and the message. And so I'm you know, sharing screencasts about Asana. As long as that content is there and it's good and it's relevant, that's all that matters. If the production quality isn't perfect, that's fine. Uh, you can work on that later. So that's that's my advice is just get started, give yourself permission to, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And uh, with, with practice, you will get quicker, you will get better at making videos. So if you have any questions about how I create my videos, please leave me a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.